So Anand, thank you so much for joining Eight Love Years on a on a Saturday morning that you on New Year's Eve. So I appreciate yeah, your yeah, time. <laughs> no, uh, Gopal, thank you so much for uh, you know trusting us with the first edition and partnering with us and taking the time out to be here. So really means a lot. So and completely my pleasure. This is what okay. we do. Okay, no, that's uh, before we get into what we do. Obviously, we'll dive into that because I'm very obviously I'm always intrigued when. when you know uh, companies like yours which have such an established presence in other uh, other industries i mean within the entertainment industry as well but not yes. sports perhaps no, at least not basketball right not so what lot led you to conceptualize an idea like uh, dunk street festival for those who are tuning in i mean dunk street festival very unique because it combines basketball with hip hop so can you just take us through what led you to this idea yeah so uh, yeah i've been a fan of basketball myself i watched the game i don't play it because uh, in my school days uh, i used to play a different sport and my friends were in basketball so i really loved the game and our courts were just side by side i was in roller hockey and those guys were in basketball so we used mm. to be just and these are all best friends um as we progressed uh, you know i moved on to my jobs and stuff i found people who play basketball as a even though they are different professionals in the event space in marketing space and stuff but they find time to play the game So I used to watch it, and I used to feel that there was a certain culture, there was a certain vibe which set these basketballers apart. Hmm. It was always in my mind, saying, you know, you all most of the basketballers primarily, you will find them lanky guys, tall guys, good-looking guys. They have a different look in their eye. You know, they are always strategizing. They always have this thing around it, and uh, that is something that I felt that uh, my game stopped when uh, you know I left school, and after that, I've been pursuing other things. but uh, i felt that basketball uh, depending on the speed and depending on the skill level it is both a game of skill and speed and strength so i have a 30 year old guy who's still playing ball and he busted his knee and then took a six month rehab then went back to the court mm. you know and uh, i think now he's touching 40 44 i know this guy for like uh, 15 odd years now and uh, we thought that that speaks a lot about the culture another subset of the culture that mm. we found out was um, that the street wear all that we wear you know the oversized hoodies the uh, the cargos the shoes for that matter are all inspired from the basketball culture per se and it has a very street feel to it anyone mm. can play it you can just go in find a court play it uh, very democratic in that sense you don't need a big setup or three or three is a perfect thing and then the kind of music that we wanted to build in uh i'm i'm in the business of entertainment i keep a track of all that's happening and we felt that uh, hip hop rap to a large extent has that same feel that same quality that these guys are looking at has almost the same beats when i uh, you know i was listening to music with uh, uh, no video but the video is playing of basketball i could just feel the bounce happening at the same time so i thought mm-hmm. why not create a festival which amalgamates all these three things together uh, it is a tall task to do it because either you have sport events which are pure sports or you have music festivals which are pure music festival so we said why don't we club both of these together because we have a very uh, subset of a same audience that's coming in and even though there are unique audiences they will like each other's work as well so we're trying to broaden up the space and more importantly here i feel personally that you know sports is entertainment it mm. excites us it entertains us it makes us laugh it makes us feel happy you know the entire vibe is there so till the time we keep on treating sports as no no hame se national khelana hai international khelana that is important but a major portion is still entertainment where you just are there just for the love of the game because it's making you so happy and all that mm. so that is how i treated this uh, event also we said that we will keep the essence of the game intact but we will add a lot of elements i do ipl so i have been working for the last 10 years and uh, you know cricket is such a white attire sport very gentleman sport and stuff and i love the way ipl has added uh, entertainment around it without compromising on the game and just elevated the game per se mm. so that is something that uh, we felt that what if we can do that and uh, dunk street was just a try yeah. this is just a vision that we had long time back it took time to practice uh, during the covid days i constructed this plan of how we wanted to do it we obviously didn't have the money to put it up we were looking at sponsors uh, but 3 uh, months back we said okay man let the sponsors be no one understands the vision we do so mm. uh, let it be and hum hi karte hain 
we'll put our own money let's put the money where our you know presentation is and let's see how it goes and uh, that's how this entire thing is come about yeah. okay and you obviously you mentioned there are three elements three distinct major elements to this which is one of, which is a rapping right then you have the the dance side of it and the then dance, of course you have the basketball ball. right but but if you really break it down further right uh, what i what i have with me is that the festival featured 3x3 basketball one versus one hip hop battles three versus three breaking battles then you had dunk and dribbling yeah. contests you had ra- rap ciphers which i personally have always loved and battles yeah. then you have a graffiti wall graffiti yeah. is also a very underrated part of the hip hop culture right? yeah. then you have the uh, then you have your artist lineup then you have live dj's food stalls lifestyle brands and sneakers sneaker of course is yeah. another whole universe of completely universe, subculture yeah. right so there are multiple elements to this obviously you have the three major elements and then you have again uh, you you know break it down yeah, you have yeah. other pillars as well so uh, going like into art connect right because one thing is to have the vision but then to execute it right practically speaking you need that experience that you have of 10 years or 20 years through ipl yeah. that's where it comes in right so can you tell us about art connect itself because for those of us who are from the basketball industry we are obviously not familiar with how the this entertainment industry has evolved and how right. management companies so can you tell us about art connect and how art connect is the one perfectly place to execute a first of its kind in india in like dunk street festival so so uh, you know art connect started in 2013 hmm. uh, so i was still before this it is uh, headed by me and my uh, partner rishi raj gudwani and uh, both of us so i left my easy cushy job earlier and rishi and i used to work together a month down the line rishi also quit and he said not working out so uh, i said okay let's start what we have in mind and uh, we had two distinct things that we wanted to build it we wanted to make art connect into uh, you know a place where we could work on intellectual property events which is ips and artist management hmm. so both of these we felt that are great app- Uh, opportunities and they are completely on our skill set in my last in my last job i used to conceptualize events and ips based on the target audience that we used to feel mm. not because music festivals chal rahe so let's do another music festival not because kuch chal raha to let's do that so we used to do it as per so we had a deeper understanding of it but to make the meter to keep the meter ticking and to keep yeah. everyone well fed we went into the regular corporate business as well which we which is you know easy for us which is where we excel in uh so during april may we worked with the uh, you know delhi capitals delhi redevels team we worked extensively on uh, ipl at multiple levels uh, then comes the conferencing side of it we worked there uh, we also execute big music festivals uh, sport events and other things that is something that we execute we have helped create festivals for other people and we executed for them also so right from niche 500 people very high end music festivals to 15000 people that is all that we do so when we kept on working around it and um, so i started way back in 2000 yeah uh, mm. doing my regular size of working in viscraft percept showtime and in the regular event companies so execution came in naturally but what we wanted to create here was uh, create content and events based on the audience not what is currently happening in the market okay mm. but in terms of the audience that works and create an accept- acceptability uh, level to it the first punjabi music festival we were actively part of it when we were working with that team because that time it was all bollywood 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 uh-huh. happening and when we were uh, you know uh, brainstorming with our uh, clients we told them bro this is what you should be doing and this is a great opportunity uh, an hour into the thing and the research and stuff that we did everyone agreed this is a missed opportunity this is something that we should do and it's one of the biggest uh, punjabi music festivals that happen right now Mm. we feel that create stuff for the audience identify your audience who your people are and then you can create good content in this we are as it is passionate about it so we are completely kicked in so we said okay this is something that we have to do so that's broadly what we do we do conferences concerts events music festivals and now this is an ip we also do another ip called run for good i am a runner myself okay so uh, i run the half marathons and stuff so we felt that it's a great uh mm-hmm. opportunity that runners are giving lot so why don't we create a run which is for charity which is called run for good okay okay so okay. when we did run for good we said okay we have cracked one we know exactly how it's going to work out uh this was in my dream for the longest time it is like a vision 
saying yaar ye karna hi karna so that's how uh, the dance street thing happened but uh, our skill sets enabled us to do this mm-hmm. the only thing was stopping us was uh, event companies don't put their money where their mouth is <laughs> so we said okay we said bro let's do it uh-huh. uh, you know karke dekhte if we are so confident about it why not do it so that's so, how it is ha to aapne kar dikhaya so congrats on that so but and then what's the f- uh, feedback been you know when i say there are two aspects to this one is of course feedback from the participants themselves right because you have such a diverse range of uh you know you have basketball players you have hip hop artists you have dancers yeah. you have graffiti uh you know uh, creative uh, individuals here so one is a what is the feedback for them because normally they they operate in silos or normally yes. the hip, the hip hop <laughs> community is together in a sense you may find dancers and rappers at the same event you won't find yeah, basketball yeah, yeah. so one is in terms of their interactions which you were perhaps privy to uh, what was what was it for them to be part of this whole gamu of uh, so, hip hop and basketball so for a larger part of the people when they came in they thought it will be a regular tournament they'll come uh-huh. in they'll play they'll get the thing and chalo ball ball pheka wapas aage and that's about it when they came in they saw this stage happening the dj on stage the graffiti and stuff and i'm talking from a basketballer's point yeah. of view they just felt the vibe was completely different hmm. and uh, then the courts we had just branded the courts slightly differently we had made it more fun uh, i had got uh, lights and other things all placed around it with a lot of moving lights and stuff like that so suddenly the vibe changed completely the basketballers the community wasn't expecting that even hmm. all the other people they came bro you told us you'll do this but we had no idea that okay. something like this would be really done because it's done in a very straight format way that this is how it would be played obviously there were a lot of learnings that we had but we said okay let's do it small let's do what we do best into that and then learn from on ground seeing what all the things that are working out on the other side of it uh, when the rappers and hip hop guys came in they were into a different field they said yaar hame to laga sirf ek stage hoga ye hoga and stuff like that and obviously you putting us in a stadium that's a big one but uh, when they saw the game it was a different vibe all together so uh, you know so the entire it was like you know in a hindi way you meeting your bichda wa bhai who mm. you know ki kahi kho gaya tha but it's in the same vibe they have yeah. the same features they have the same interest they just doing different things okay mm. and it was just that so it was um, i was talking to a lot of people after that Uh, in fact the first half of the day people said bro the vibe is completely different we never expected it uh, so doing the first event is always you know the easiest part because i am putting the vision i am making you see what i want you to see and it's easy mm. next year when you come in or next edition when you come in you already have these as givens so you expect like a stage hoga yahan pe kuch action hoga now these guys will come prepared they want more action they will spend more time to the basketballers who are just watching the game maybe they will go you know watch the hip hop contest for some time they watch the b-boying guys for some time the b-boying guys when they are free their audience is free they will come here because now they they will come expecting that okay this is all the stuff that's going to happen around here mm-hmm. but it is it is a new thing for everyone everyone is trying to get a sense of what was happening so i loved it when people were just going idhar udhar kya chal raha hai yaar chal kya raha hai which uh-huh. was great because it, it you know it was kind of a place which they could relate to but at the same point in time uh, every time there was something unique that was happening there were dj's coming in there were hip hop guys happening there was b boying happening the basketballers are tall lanky guys were moving around and they were eating at the same food court they were looking at the same you know street wear they were looking at the same sneakers so it was very you know uh, cohesive in that sense something that we felt it's a great audience mix uh, and we felt that this is the right thing to do yaar to karke dekhte hain no no this is so perfect people, Yeah, yeah, no, it's perfect. I didn't actually segues uh, perfectly into my next question, and this is something that excites me because I'm in the media industry completely, right? So I I live on content, especially content that comes up organically. So the beauty yeah. of of an event of this sort is that you have created a platform, you have brought all these elements together, right? And I know it may be premature to ask this, but did you get a sense that hey, you know what, these hip hop guys are going to remain in touch with the basketball guys? maybe some exciting collaborations may happen yeah. because again when you look at the nba you know you have basketball players who also dabble in rap and you have uh, yeah. you have Definitely. artists who sort of continue to play hip hop artists who play basketball so do you are you already getting a sense that you have created these sort of bonds that transcend you know the pure uh, business aspect of an event into something larger where these guys will keep keep in touch absolutely so our idea was build a community around it 
and get the community sorted out so that you know it's cohesive it's not distinct so that was the first part so introduction is what we did right now. yes and after introduction comes in acceptance hmm. so now people when they go in they accept these guys as the same unit because a sports guy will always feel yaar main to sports hu par bhai tu rap hi sunta hai na hmm. sunta to tu hindi wale rap hi hai theek hai hmm. aur wo dance wale bande bhi same sun rahe so the first comes in introduction second comes in acceptance third will be collaboration Haan. so now this platform becomes that part where from introduction is what we have done the next time there will be more acceptance to it okay and then we can see a lot of collaboration happening that's my bigger idea it's not about you know just about making money and stuff it is about making sure that there is collaboration there is everyone is in this together so it's that kind of a thing it's cohesive but uh, i am sure that will happen because um, it is not just english rap that happens in india now they to see the rap culture the hip hop culture it's going through a transitional stage you know uh, what happened in the 80s or 90s in uh, us is the kind of stuff that's happening here now mm. we have uh, and more importantly you know there out there it's english but here we have haryanvi rap we have rajasthani rap we have bhojpuri aane wala hai english to chal hi raha hai bombay has a different language delhi has a different language you know and everyone vibes to a different culture uh broda we from uh, bangalore he is doing some fantastic stuff here and i i love that guy really so uh and th- this is where the players are also going to come in you know yeah. it is not that we are like a one language country we are a country where we have multiple languages multiple cultures but everyone does the same thing Mm-hmm. they can call it unique but we all do the same thing we all watch the same sport we all do the same thing so we just wanted to create this platform where we can build this later on this will be an ip that will stay for a longer time okay and okay. it will keep on evolving yeah gopal frankly even i don't know how it will evolve that's my thought it should evolve that way introduction uh is to the part that we have done right now after that it will flow organically but i have i have full faith it will happen okay uh and and now again uh now hardcore what i call a business of basketball question right because for me also i've i've been covering basketball for the last 10 years right and I, the sense i've always got yeah. is that mainstream brands are still hesitant to get into basketball because it is such a niche sport obviously they understand the potential of it because the nba is such a uh, such a amazing proof of concept in the us right but in india of course basketball is still not understood uh well enough yeah. from a from a brand potential sponsorships you know that that brands will get roi so this is my question to you is from a brand collaboration standpoint what was the process like in identifying suitable partners who are aligned with the vision because the vision is very very specific right because you have a mismatch with the brand is going to affect the brand value in the long term of what you're trying to build so, so i'll I'll, yeah. i'll i'll explain this slightly in a different manner uh you know audience is important for the brand Yes. Okay. What is the kind of audience that we are talking to? So, uh, why do we don't have anything happening in the basketball scene? Because there are not enough wins, and if there are enough wins, they haven't been spoken about it in that sense. Hmm. These are great, good-looking guys. They are fit guys. You know, uh, I love the girls team. You know, uh, coming up, these are uh, people with a lot of attitude. They have the right set, and this is the kind of stuff that I would want my brand to be associated with. Okay. why they don't do it because we target too much on the basketball basketball side so first ah. thing let's build an audience okay yeah basketball is not a natural sport to us and sadly uh, or you know whatever there is one sport that rules everyone else but there are a lot of other sports kabaddi has come up they have some great uh, sponsorships that are coming in hockey has been there badminton has come up the reason i think that basketball can make it is first uh, you know get the game more accessible get it from the courts to a more festival format get the audience aligned to it agar yaar mere paas fans hi nahi hai mere sport ke theek hai so who's my fan a player is my fan you know so for a sport but in this kind of a scenario uh, gopal i am not a player i don't play basketball i am a fan of the game because i just love it i was closest this time around to the game and i loved it because the speed was fantastic so gets the fans in there first get the audience there first that is point number 1 Point number two becomes: Let's make stars of these players. Okay, let's not restrict them. And there are so many brands now which can collaborate with these kind of guys and create a much larger audience space. Mm. The moment we do that, our game is set. You know, 
we our game is set we don't have to think about it saying that uh, you know brands will come in uh, a lot of brands when we spoke to they were categorically they said no we don't understand this it's basketball it's rap it's hip hop we don't want to do it and stuff like that they were very polite in a deli way of not saying no but still saying no <laughs> so but uh, two days after the festival we received emails from three of the guys saying let's talk about the next edition because someone was keeping track of what was happening mm. i was talking to a media company uh they said just come back with a proof of what you've done because we understand but you know we also have a lot of ticks that we need to make in our you know uh, check boxes but so i said don't worry i am doing it i will let you know and they said that okay we'll partner on the next one so the idea is it has to grow slowly gradually but we need to increase more fan base more audience and keep audience in mind and make the sport three on three is fantastic yeah? these uh you know it's a small format it's you can do multiple sports and one vantage point you can see two three games together happening at the same time and uh, keeping our uh, you know attention span thanks to our mobiles now that uh, you know attention span is so much so three on three works best and that's great so i think importance is that we should focus more on uh, getting the audience right first and then making the sport bigger another pro- another issue that i feel we follow too much on what's happening in the west hmm. okay we follow too much on what's happening in the west uh the game is way evolved there the game game was invented in us it's way evolved they've been playing it for a much longer time uh colleges school level so it's it's at a much deeper level maybe what a cricket is here today that's the kind of importance so if we always compare ourselves to the west you know or anyone else we won't be able to do it let's focus on our game our players our brands our audience okay we are in for this but okay. but the focus has to be there yeah no no so i want to uh, sort of break break this down a bit further uh, one thing that you said which i found interesting is that make sure there people come right there are there are people that the audience is there and then brands of course will want to associate so my question yeah. to you is because i'm basing this on another event this was a basketball uh, league that happened uh, they got a they got a hip hop artist i don't recall yeah. i don't recall his name but he was pretty yeah. big with his cult following so what happened right. was when that artist came for that half time show or whatever then janta bhari hai stadium mein okay. yeah, yeah yeah and then after that aadhe ghante baad all the majority of the people left right that's, so that's how it was. yeah so was it uh, but in this case the difference with the festival format is that because you have multiple stages i assume right and things happening that there is always a crowd which is moving right there's much more integration that's exactly that's right that's the idea so so you know uh that's why i'm saying we can't have the same format that works in the west to be here because people ah. are there for the game when we uh, you know in in the ipl games in delhi we introduced uh, a lot of elements into it we introduced the sound and light show we introduced um, the laser show and all that uh but with my clients the idea is clear people are coming here for the game and we are entertaining them mm. in mm. this case they have come here for the entertainment and game becomes second yeah, yeah so, so my the idea is yeah sorry to interrupt you but this is this is my question to you is so uh, would you say for your first edition because i i assume your strength at the moment lies in your artist lineup right the hip hop is where uh, you probably have your a much wider data base of artists and singers and dancers so would you say that at this event at least initially people came for the hip hop and then they stayed for the basketball no no i would say our, our strength lies in understanding the sports entertainment business hmm. okay not the sport business we are not sport guys totally we understand exactly. the sport entertainment business hmm. okay so entertainment is a great strength for us uh, most of the talent that came in either came in completely as a favor to me and my company okay and uh, or at a very very minimal price point because they also felt that you know this guy or these these guys of this team is saying something then maybe there's some value in it and uh, i would say yes our strength lies there but our strength lies in understanding the sport entertainment okay. not just sport so so you know there's this minor difference saying like i said earlier sports is entertainment if we keep on treating it as saying sports sports sport per se then then we're just narrowing our vision totally yeah so yes okay. our skill lies in understanding that and uh, we just wanted to put it out saying this is how it works maybe uh, next time around people will be more uh, approachable they will walk watch more games they will watch more action that's happening 
and and uh, our layout will be such that we'll have a, a mix of all these things together you okay. know so when one stage is happening another is stopped and these guys are moving in so that's the part really so we understand the sport entertainment side of it now just sport so yes entertainment was a big thing this year because uh, but for me sports was a big thing this year entertainment come naturally to us okay. so for me that's the easier part okay but in terms of again uh, i don't know how uh, how far you can break this down but uh, out of the what was the footfall like and was the footfall would you say majorly participants themselves and can you just break down uh, in terms of uh, how so many people turned up yeah so this time around uh, there were around 1500 people through the day coming in we had not done any promotions we were very uh, you know sorted about it saying we don't want to do too much promotions we didn't do any mass promotion any mass media a it costs a lot of money and b uh, also to a large extent that uh, we wanted to get the product right first mm. saying that what is a prototype how is it working what's happening maybe next time around i'll be able to tell you for sure that you know i have uh, 15000 people coming in through the day mm. you know i'm going to make it at least into a 10x kind of a thing but this year around there weren't many people there were mostly people who came in from who had known about what was happening okay who knew about from uh, the artist community or from the cosmic uh, ballers guys that they mm. promoted it so there were individual groups that came in so okay. in that sense the there was some who were there only for the sport there was some who were only for this there's a small gap which wanted to see all the action that was there which was there for the festival hmm, hmm. because now in delhi the festival culture is huge so people come out they know that something is happening at jawala nehru stadium let's go walk in and they spent like 2 hours there they spoke to me they said it's pretty unique otherwise we just come eat go back buy a few things and go back but here it's very different so maybe the next time around i'll be able to give you like a complete data on what my audience is because then i'll be promoting it through and through but this time around it was mostly people who we knew who knew the artist who knew the ballers who knew all that so but but these numbers were uh, good enough for you in terms of the brands who were associated with you this time they were satisfied with the with the turnout they they were satisfied because we were very clear from to them from the first day itself that we have no idea how many people will come in we have no idea i told them i have no idea 500 people might land up even less or more i have no idea about it and i was very very candid and frank with them so they said okay and they trusted us from the first part so that is why those guys are very important to me and when they saw the vibe they saw the thing they said bro we love it we'll you know partner about the next ones but at least the product is right and we were very clear saying let's do this it's a great thing it's not a big cost for you guys okay mm-hmm. all costs are mine so be a part of it and they were more than happy to be a part of it yeah. so uh, we were candid with them from day one we said we have no idea and mm-hmm. uh, they saw the frankness in us and they saw the vision that we wanted to do so they supported us that was okay. it okay you were already... people back yeah. out the last time one or two people backed out at the last minute okay so then they called me the next day after the thing was through they called up uh, the sponsorship team saying yaar sorry we couldn't do it let's talk about it so we said good yaar it it is part of the game that's your business this is my business so we no but uh, they were they were okay we had told them that we have no idea on numbers so let's not look at numbers right now okay so the last two questions i mean this the first one is uh, you already answered this by answering other questions by you spoke about you know uh, t- maybe having only one stage active at a time uh, so that the focus always everyone goes to uh, learning yeah. yeah yeah so what Learn are your learnings? learnings yeah what are your learnings uh, or takeaways from this inaugural event and how will these inform and enhance the future editions so we have like a full plethora of list of all learnings that we have this time around uh the base premise will remain the same maybe we'll work uh, differently on uh, integrating now both the things together you know mm-hmm. so uh, the basketball will get more integrated into the stage entertainment part the stage entertain- entertainment part will get more integrated this side around so i think that is something that we are planning in uh another learning was now uh, how to get maximum number of people here how do we talk to this community a on the social and other platforms the community is being talked about but how do we utilize mass marketing for us how do we utilize a radio or a print to actually promote this in the right sense so that's been a big learning uh, another learning is how do we make it more uh, you know optical friendly how do we make it more you know content friendly here and stuff so that's been another learning that we wanted to build in and uh, one side is that 
how do I integrate these brilliant sportsmen and sportswomen and sports persons together? Okay, from an entertainment point of view, to not just sport, but being a part of this on a holistic level. So that is something that will progress as we go. Uh, get the brands more involved in the game. So let it not be an isolated thing. How do we get the brands more involved? The brands are actively involved, here, but we want to get them involved even further out so that it's, you know, deeply entrenched. It's not something that, okay, that's a brand and this is a sport and that's entertainment. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do the three isolations. We want the merging of the three things together and the audience being an active part of, you know, because this is one of the only sports where you are closest to the game. Mm -hmm. You know, the ball is just like inches away when, it's you know uh, caught by the player. So we said, how do we make it that much more inclusive in that sense? So that's been a long list, but broadly, this is uh, what a thought has been. Uh, another thought has been on the layout of, of on a physical construct on how do we get that layout right? And uh, from our thought, we got the layout right this time around. But when on ground we are there, we received a lot of feedback from other people saying, you know, we can tweak this, we can tweak that. So maybe tweaks, not changes broadly on a on a holistic level, but maybe tweaks that will happen at home. Okay. That we'll keep on doing. Okay. And the last uh, last question, of course, is the classic one, which is what can we expect from future editions in terms of where, when, how, <laughs> how often? <laughs> so because we would love it in obviously other cities, right? That would that would yes. be the logical next step. That would be logical next step, but uh, that would happen a little later. Okay. So first I will get I'll do another festival in, in a couple of months from now and uh, get this right. Maybe in March or April, uh, we're still contemplating what would be the best time and uh, build that in. Get more support, get more teams, get more participation, get more brands involved in it and get the entire construct right in the first go. Hmm. Okay, sorry, in the, in the next one. And once that is through, then we take it on to multiple places and uh, multiple locations. That's the... Phase two for me, but I'm still not through the phase one here. So phase yeah. one is get it right, make it more engaging, make it so much fun that people love it, that people yeah. own this festival. You know, they should yeah. own this festival. That This is how we want it to. You know, the moment they start giving me feedback, that is it then done, then we can take it to other places. But uh, that would be phase two. And that should happen in the next 12 months itself. So we should have uh, another city in the next 12 months. But uh, the next edition or a, maybe uh, a bigger edition will happen uh, in the next three months itself, okay. in e either March or April. And uh, yes, it will be bigger. It will be better. It will be more engaging. It will have a lot more fun. It will have a lot more teams. Uh, we're going to increase the prize money as well. We're going to uh, give out more prize money across multiple uh, aspects. And yeah, that's how we will keep on bringing it up. And this will be done in constant feedback from, from stakeholders like you who will tell us saying that yeah, this is something that you should be doing and we're going to keep on experimenting and exploring. Our business would be to make sure that it uh, retains its own vibe, it has its own thing and then it's organic, it will go in. So, but bigger, better for sure. Okay, awesome. Uh, thanks, sure. thanks so much for your time, Anand and wish you and Dunk Street Festival much, much bigger successes down the road. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gopal and uh, wish the entire team at Eklavi a very, very happy new year. Thanks for supporting yeah. us. You've yeah. been a blast and uh, love it when this thing comes in. So all okay. good. Thank okay. you. Okay, great. All right.